Still Dr. Doolittle and Show Horse Expert. And I'm, I'm my wonderful guest today is Kim Wind. Uh, let me give you uh, some intro on her because she's amazing. I, I just discovered her a few weeks ago. It's like, I have to talk to you. And I know you're going to love hearing her story too. So Kim is the owner of Passionate Horsemanship. Doesn't it? I love the sound of that. Just just feels so near and dear to my heart. She's the creator of Communication Mastery Foundations. Kim has over 40 years of horse experience and 20 plus years helping new and returning horse owners transform their confusion and overwhelm. Having been there and done that, I totally get that, Kim. <laughs> Transforming that into confidence and clarity and caring for and training your horse. Uh, she specializes in trail obstacle sports and incorporates positive reinforcement into her training programs. Welcome, Kim. I'm delighted to have you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, I want to know, how did you get into horses and how long have you been doing this? How long have you had them? Oh, gosh. I've had horses since I was uh 12 and i of course i've always had a love for horses been horse crazy all my life we know we'd be driving along and i'd be like oh my gosh there's a horse and i'd always want to stop and see him and stuff but my grandfather rode lipizzans in the cavalry wow and so he taught me a lot about horses wow. and i guess you know i got the horse bug from him he was the one in our whole family that was crazy about horses. My mom liked them. So th that's where I got it. Well, we, we have a lot in common then because I fell in love with horses when I was five years old. And my best friend in first grade, her father trained horses for the cavalry as well. And they always had horses. And I would, it's like, I just wanted to go there and hang out all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that is that's wonderful. Okay, keep going. Tell me what. <laughs> Excuse me. So I, again, like I said, just being horse crazy, and I always wanted one. And then I finally um, got my first horse, and she was really sweet and laid back and stuff. And my grandfather helped me get her going under saddle, and then my mom wanted me to give her to my sister because my sister. She likes horses and stuff, but she's not as different like I am. She's more the artistic type and can draw and all that stuff. <clears throat> so I gave her that horse. And then the next horse I got, I saved my lunch money to get the horse. Wow. This horse reared over backwards. I mean, when they went to catch her, they had to hide the bridle halter behind their back and then sneak up on her kind of and put it around her and get her. Oh. And I broke her from, or not really broke her, but stopped her from rearing over backwards. And I went on to win the New Mexico 4-H and FFA uh, Rodeo Queen on her. Wow, that's so, extraordinary. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. So, and it just took me into doing more and more. And we... Um, did like Jim Kahanas, which are play days, some people know as. Yeah, yeah. And so we did the barrel racing, the pole bending, the goat tying, all those things associated with doing play days. <clears throat> and then came along the horse show part of it, you know, the Western pleasure, the English pleasure. And it was so funny because when I was doing a Western pleasure class, this guy that I competed against, his family was well off and had bought him a horse that cost him 5000 at the time. That was a lot of money way back then. Yeah. My horse was 65 and she beat him. He was furious. <laughs> <laughs> but I have always made it a point to create a special bond with my horses. Yeah. I don't consider them tools. I don't treat them as such. Yeah. I make sure I form that bond because when you develop that bond and that relationship, it will go a long ways with that horse. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. That's, a, that's the critical most number one thing you always have to do. That's and I, when I work with people who have problems with their horses, we always have to start there. It's like we have to repair the bond or form the bond. Sometimes they never took the time to actually connect. 
you know, and once you do that, then now you're working together. Now you, you know, you've got a prayer. <laughs> oh. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I tell people too. <clears throat> in fact, I did a video on this one time about spending time with your horse. It's kind of like having a friend. You know, if the only time you went to see that friend is when you wanted something from them, they're going to get tired of it after a while. It's the same thing with the horse. The only time you want to go out there is I want to catch you up and I want to do this, you know, ride or do instead of just really spending some quality time bonding with them. That's where they get to the point where it's like, oh, here she comes again. Uh. Yeah. 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 I know. You know, if your horse doesn't come to you and isn't happy to see you when you go to see them, <laughs> they run from you. You got to chase them down. Uh, something's wrong. You know, you got a problem. Exactly. And I had got a horse in here. <clears throat> I think I've had him six years. I could go get down my business. But anyway, when I got him, he'd go to the back of his pen because apparently I think somebody had kind of mistreated him. And he'd go to the back of his pen and he would shake. Oh. And when I put him out in my back little lot that I have, there was a round pin out back. <clears throat> I went to catch him and I couldn't catch him because in, with that round pin and him going around and around, I had to have my husband ha come out there and help me. Well, because of the positive reinforcement and spending time with him, yeah. I can go anywhere and catch him now. Yeah. I mean, he just, you know, he's leery of new people, which I can understand. Yeah. But with me, no, I, I don't have any problems with him. That's great. That's so great. I love it. I remember the. I had a Russian Arabian. Uh, I adored this horse. His name was Taylor, and he he played all day in a thirty acre pasture with his you know uh, horse mates, his buddies, a third. Um, and then when I would go out there, so if you can imagine trying to catch a horse in a thirty acre pasture, <laughs> oh, it doesn't want to be caught. Forget it. You know exactly. Uh, but yeah, I go out there and call him and he would come galloping from the farthest reaches, you know, um, whinnying and so excited and happy to see me. And, it, you know, it just it would always bring tears to my eyes uh, because it was such an extraordinary gift. You yes. Know, it's such a gift when we treasure them properly. Yes. And, you know, it always gets me when people say <clears throat> horses have, don't feel anything, you know. Oh, it just really upsets me because I'm like, horses feel things. They understand things more than you have any idea. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> they are sentient. They are wise. They are intelligent. They think. They feel. They reason. They have senses of humor. Um, you know, I in my in my vocabulary, I say that horses and animals are angels, guides, teachers, and healers. And when we learn, when we evolve enough to learn how to recognize and respect and revere them for who they truly are, then they make us better people. So, yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thank you for the work you're doing with horses and their people. And in fact, I want to ask you, what made you decide to teach people um, how to train their horses? Because I saw, <clears throat> excuse me, my allergies are acting up. <laughs> Um, I saw where people would send their horse to a trainer. They get the horse back and the trainer didn't always show, share everything with them. So they didn't know how to do a lot of these things. And then they didn't form the bond with that horse. Sometimes the trainer would, and then they wouldn't get the same results or they would get their horse back. Like I just saw a story the other day on Facebook. Lady sent her horse to the trainer. <clears throat> trainer didn't really work with it. The horse was so skinny, you could see its hip bones and ribs because it wasn't fed right. That makes me furious. And yeah. that person shouldn't be a trainer ever again. <clears throat> so I wanted to teach people how to train their own horse so that they can have that relationship. They would have the confidence to know exactly what to do or I want to teach them what to look for if they decide they really want to send their horse to a trainer. Yeah, I love that. I want to I'll take a real quick note. Anyone listening here today, if you want to find out more about Kim and her work, if this is resonating with you and you're like, yes, I want that, go to her website at passionatehorsemanship.com. 
and check out Kim's work because she's really wonderful. Okay, Kim, sorry, I had a little station break. <laughs> that, oh, that's all right. That's all right. No problem. So yeah, keep going. So what? So how so, do you do that? Well, and what I do is I can help people. You know, they can come here. Um, I can do it by video coaching. You know, no matter where they live because. I have the gift to be able to see things that are going on when they do those videos. I can see exactly what's going on with that horse and that person. In fact, when some people took my horse agility courses, um, <clears throat> the women, when they do the videotape and they share it with me and I tell them different things and I'm like, how do you see all that stuff? That's just my gift. I can see that stuff and I'm able to help them through that. So, they, in fact, one of my students that took the course, <clears throat> she had never competed with her horses at all. She decided to compete in the horse agility competition. And her first time out, I knew she was going to do really well, but her first time out, she made a perfect score of 100. Wow. She was so excited. And that, I think there was like 30, 33, 34 people in the class. She was the only one to make a perfect score of 100. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Yeah, she said it gave her the confidence, and that's what really, it just lights my soul on fire to work with people and teach them how to work with their horses and get those kind of results without using force, fear, or intimidation. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, how, how much better is it to work in partnership because you're in sync, you're merged, you are understanding each other, and your horse comes to you with a big heart and goodwill. No. Yes, it's ah. just so exciting. I mean, I just you feel that connection with that horse and stuff, and it's a willing partnership. They're like, "What can I do?" Yeah, you know, they're happy to be with you. Yes. Um. Yeah. So we're running a little bit out of time. So I'm going to ask you tell us some more about your online course. You have something called Communication Mastery Foundations. Yes, this is um, a course that it's a six week course is what it is. <clears throat> there's videos, there's PDF files in it that you can download and take with you to the barn. And what it does is it teaches you how to use positive reinforcement and putting a foundation on a horse. And when I say foundation, there's basic tasks that a horse should understand so that it translates from the ground to the saddle and you have a safer horse instead of being in the saddle, trying to jerk them around and make them understand that I just totally disagree with doing that stuff. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, if you don't have, if your horse doesn't have good ground manners, then what makes you think you're going to be safe when you get on their back? Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. like you don't have that connection and the working together and him and, and your horse happy to be with you and, and play with you, you know, then yeah, let's go back and fix that. Otherwise you're like a train wreck about to happen. Well, and that's what I love about positive reinforcement because when you use it correctly, just like with any tool, you learn to use it correctly. Your horse will show you, they understand what you're asking them to do. You're not just forcing them to do it. They're like, let me show you, I understand this. It is so cool. Yes, it is cool. And it can be even more cool when your horse goes, you know, I get what you want to do. And I think I've got a better way to do it. Let me show you. Let me show you this. What do you think of this? No, I've never laughed so much using positive reinforcement because they show me. How about this? How about that? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's so yeah. funny. <laughs> um, do you use clicker training at all, Kim? That is. That's it's positive reinforcement or clicker uh, training. Is <clears throat> what well, I, I have yeah. to say, really funny. Um, I started playing with clicker training with my horse, Taylor, and I taught him how to fetch and how to pick things up and hand them to me when I was on his back. And the reason I taught him that was because I'm really klutzy and I'm always dropping things and, you know, um, and he was a 16 2 hand horse and I'm five foot three. <laughs> so out in pasture and field, when I dropped something, I wanted him to pick it up and give it to me again so without me having to get off and get back on. <laughs> Very lazy. I'm just so lazy. <laughs> but he loved playing the fetch games more than pretty much anything that we did. He thought it was the most fun and it would always be it was always offering me something trying to see if this would what do you think of this this is fun right i love mm -hmm. the joy of that thank you so much you want to finish up with anything else that we haven't gotten to um 
Well, I have a free report for people if they're interested, and it's horse care and tack tips. So if they go to passionatehorsemanship.com forward slash horse care, there's lots of great tips in there um, that will really help you out with your horse. Okay, and for everybody, we're going to put that link uh, below. Um, so uh, look in the chat uh, in the comments and say the link again, Kim. It is passionatehorsemanship.com forward slash horse care. One word, horse care. Yes, horse care. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, I'm going to go look for that now. Um, um, so everybody, if you will, go to passionhorsemanship.com. Show us some love. Uh, tell us what you liked about what we've talked about. And uh, we'd love to hear your stories as well. Thank you, Kim. It's been wonderful talking to you. Thank uh, you. And if anybody has questions, reach out to me. I am here to help you. Yes. All right. Always have a great day, everybody. Go love on your horses. And we love you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hey, it's Val. I hope you enjoyed that and are feeling inspired. There's two things I want you to do next. One is to share this with your horse-loving friends so they can enjoy it too. And the next thing, really important, get your copy of my free ebook, Seven Reasons Horses Act Out or Go Lame. It's at showhorseexpert.com. You're going to love it. You're going to learn all seven of the most common problems horses have with humans. Knowing what I know as a horse whisperer will help you understand and bond with your horse at a much deeper level, and you can start solving problems together. Seriously, get your copy now. I've had people tell me that their relationship with their problem horse changed when they read the book and that they noticed how much happier their horse was, too. It's really good stuff. All right, go to showhorseexpert.com. I'll see you there.